God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we praise your name. Oh, God, we bless your name. Thank you. God, I praise you. We'd like to welcome you to Victory Tabernacle Bible Training Center, 300 East Hampton Street, Darlington, South Carolina. Truly, indeed, it's an honor and a privilege to be here today to come and to worship the Lord and to give God honor and to give God praise. And we're here to honor the woman of God and to bless God and to honor Pastor Joyce on her birthday. Let's give it up for her, come on. We thank God for her today. Oh God, I praise your name. God, we praise your name. We wanna honor everybody. We wanna honor our leaders that are here. Let's bless God for, uh, first let's bless God for our elders, Elder Sheila Jackson and Elder Elaine Bonaparte. Let's bless God for Minister Jawan Fleetwood, Minister Joshua Fleetwood, Minister Arnisha Fleetwood. Let's give it up for Minister Brad Bristow, Minister Avery Lagan. Thank God for Minister Jennifer Singletary. Oh, God, and let's bless God for Minister Sheree Eli. We bless God for Deacon Lee and Deaconess Brenda Savage. We bless God for Sister Jackie and uh, Mason and Sister Jamaica Hemingway, Brother Brandon Morrison and Sister Jasmine Morrison. Let's give it up for them. Come on. God, I praise your name. We bless God today. Ah, oh, yeah. We also thank God as also Brother Brandon's birthday today. Let's bless God for him also. Thank you, Jesus. We're getting ready to go, go into praise and worship, and we're going to ask, uh, I think Pastor Joyce is going to help sing the first song, and Minister Josh is going to take it uh, solo uh, from there, and then we're going to come forth after that, okay? Come on, let's give it up for Pastor Joyce. Come on. How many people know he's worthy? Come on and lift your hands if you know he's worthy. We honor your name, Jesus. Your name is worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. We honor your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. No one above you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords, yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, let's worship Thank him. Come on, let's lift our hands and honor him. He's our King of kings and the Lord of Hallelujah. lords. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. How many people came to worship on this morning? Hallelujah. The name of the song says, here's my worship. And it's basically just talking about the sacrifice that we're offering up to our Lord and Savior. If you know he's worthy, come on and lift it up with us and help us magnify the name of our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord. Come on, get, get excited if you know he's worthy. Yes, he is. 
on this morning to know that we serve a powerful God. The name of the song says, Mighty you are. It says, The heavens proclaim your wonders. Come on, 
on, sing it with us. Lord God Almighty, for you are clothed with majesty. The heavens declare your wonders, for you are great and do marvelous things. For you alone are God. There is no one else like you. Let the nations declare that you have done great things. Mighty you are, holy you are, your mercy Good to us. 
Hallelujah to God. Father, we praise your name. Father, we give your name glory. Aya. Oh God, I praise you. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Aya Basia. O Tobo Kosaya. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, we praise you. Oh, you may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Truly, indeed, it's an honor and a privilege to be here, to be here, to be a blessing to Pastor Joyce. We thank God for her today. We honor her. We just, hallelujah. There you go. Thank you. We had, we had honored her in two years. Hallelujah to God. I praise you. Hey. Oh, God, somebody feel like breaking loose. Hey, somebody go ahead and give God a praise. I tell you what, give him a praise for me right now. I'll get with you later. I'll repay the debt later.
God, I pray. There you go. Run it. Run it. Run it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We got a lot of ground to cover. Hallelujah to God. We got a lot of ground to cover, but I'm going to do it today the way the Lord gave it to me to do it. Is that all right? Hallelujah to God. We thank God for Listen, I, I want to encourage you, and I really want to encourage you with this, that the people in your life that mean the most to you, you really need to honor them while they're living. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't really think highly or too, too much of folks crying over caskets and rubbing their back at the funeral. I, I don't play them games. If you didn't do nothing while they was living, I'm not rubbing your back at the funeral. I can tell you that now. Hallelujah to God. The people that mean the most to you in your life, you need to honor them while they're living because when they're dead, nobody hears it. Is that all right? Hallelujah to God. You better honor them. You better honor them. And that's what I want to do today. I want to honor Pastor Joyce today because I want to, I really want to honor her and I I'm going to ask uh, Sister Jasmine uh, Moody if she will come up. Hallelujah to God. And Pastor George, this is from me. Y'all make sure, listen to me. Sister Jasmine, Brother Brandon, y'all make sure y'all see me at the church so y'all can get paid. Because I ain't y'all not buying no flowers for my wife, for me. No, give me the bill. I'm paying the bill. Is that all right? Pastor George, this is for you. Hallelujah to God. I want to give you some flowers while you live it. Hallelujah to God. She said, thank you. Hallelujah to God. I want to put them somewhere we can see them. Put them over there. Uh, over, can we put them over there on the uh, I ain't want them to fall, though. Put them over. How about over there? Oh, they see. Oh, you want it? Okay, I see what you're saying. Come on, I tell you what. Uh, where you think they need to go back? Without tilting over. I mean, she can put them right down the floor if she want to. I'm scared up in this pulpit. Oh, uh, you gotta know how past can get, and I got this heavy boot on too. Hallelujah to God. We thank God. Pastor George, I wanted to give you your flowers while you was living. Is that all right? And while you're living, God, I praise your name and telling folks how much you appreciate them after they're gone. Man, I'm telling y'all, that ain't worth for biscuits and water. Hallelujah to God. Man, I wish you would have told them. Go somewhere and sit down. Go have a seat, man. Find yourself a seat. Is that all right? Hallelujah to God because now is the time because if you don't appreciate somebody while you're living, you don't appreciate them when they did. Is that all right? You just miss what they could do for you. 
God, I praise your name. Is that all right? You, let's go to the, I'm, I'm going to do this the way God gave me to do this. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Kind of shock y'all, didn't I? First Timothy 5 and 17. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Oh, this is the preaching for the day right here. First Timothy 5 and 17. The Bible said, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in word and in doctrine. Turn to Romans 3 and 17. Render therefore all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs, the 31st chapter and verse number 10. Proverbs 31 and 10. And hallelujah to God. How many of y'all enjoyed the, the sermon that I preached? Hallelujah to God on my mother. How many of y'all enjoyed the sermon? Tell you about my champion. How many of y'all enjoyed enjoy it? Hallelujah to God. Well, listen, I don't plan on dying, and she ain't plan on dying no, no, no time soon. Is that all right? Hallelujah to God. But I, I want to preach to Pastor Josh today while she living. Is that all right? Hallelujah to God. And the Bible says, and Minister Brad, I found out something in the word of God that really messed me up today. And, and to, the, to the husbands today, you can take a bow. You really can take a bow today because you're going you're gonna to be blessed today because your wives are going to be blessed today. Is that all right? Hallelujah. If I ain't never help you out, I'm going to help you out today. Is that all right? This is your day to say, Hallelujah. Thank God for the word. Proverbs 31 and 2 says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. I found out that the word virtuous here have several defi definitions. One of the definitions is strength. One of the definitions is efficacy. Another definition means wealth. But the definition that I love the most, and I never heard it brought out like this before, is tell your neighbor an army. Lord have mercy. Pastor Joyce, if I would preach to you today, I would preach my army. Oh God, I praise you. Tell your neighbor my army. Hallelujah. Who can find? We know our army and is, is an organized military force on land. The Bible says her value and price is worth more than the price of rubies. There's nothing natural or nothing of value that can be compared to the army that God gave me. There's nothing that can be compared. There's nothing uh, financial there's no money that you can give me there's nothing uh, that you can trade for me that I would trade in uh, for the virtuous woman for the props Proverbs 31 woman uh, for the army that God gave me in the presence of Pastor George Fleetwood come on let's give God a praise for her the Bible said, y'all roll with me here. And verse number 11 said, the heart of her husband safely trust in her so that he have no need of spoil. Tell your neighbor, a woman of trust. Listen, we don't have any secret bank accounts. Hallelujah to God, there's no bank accounts with my name on it and her name is not on it. Tell your neighbor, I, her name is on everything. Everything we do when it comes to business, we do it together. You know why we do it together? Because her husband trusts in her and there's no need for her to spoil. And that means she knows how to handle business discreetly and use wisdom concerning the affairs of the house. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. My army, the woman that God gave me, it is she is not wasteful she is not selfish she will not waste the house money but she uses it wisely and there's no need for her to spoil 
Hallelujah. The Proverbs 20, 31 woman that God is looking for is somebody that the husband can trust. Hallelujah. That God it should not be. The husband said, baby, with, my, with a hundred dollars I had in my wallet, well, babe, I took it. Hallelujah to God. Babe, what happened to so-and-so? I spent it. I thank God that these 30 some years, hallelujah, my wife has been a woman that I can trust. It is somebody that she has no need of spoil. The Bible also says she would do him no, do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She is consistent in her conduct toward her husband. Her conduct toward her husband always has his best interest her motives are always pure they are always honorable toward me I'm telling you Pastor Joyce is my biggest fan she had my back when nobody had my back hallelujah she had my support and guess what I enjoy her company and she enjoys my company sometime when I ain't acting like the devil And I'm telling y'all, she has never done one evil thing toward me. Somebody look at your wife and say, you heard that? Yes, sir. Holly, listen, ain't nobody up here lying. Listen, all these funerals, we telling a bunch of lies. A lot of times we up here lying. Holly, he was a good old boy. That man was a drunk. But we come in here to tell the truth today. The Bible said in verse, I'm talking about the, my army. I'm going to get to that. Tell them my army. I'm going to get to that. Uh, but verse 13 says, she seeketh wool and flax and, and worketh willingly with her hands. She, she is like the merchant ship and she bringeth her food from afar off. I'm telling you, Pastor Joy, just know how to make it work. Tell your neighbor, she know how to make it work. Hallelujah to God. She know how to make it work. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Growing up, hallelujah, we couldn't afford the finest of clothes. We could not dress our kids in the finest of clothes. But I'm telling you what, hallelujah, they dressed it neat. They dressed it clean. We may have may have had Walmart clothing, uh, but they were iron and clean. Uh, tell your neighbor, you ain't got no excuse. Uh, you may not have the greatest of rags, uh, but can they be iron? Iron, come on here, Proverbs 31 woman. Can they be iron and clean? Your child ain't got no business walking around with more wrinkles than a 90 year old grandma. Tell you, they be iron and clean. They don't have to be named brand, iron and clean. Pastor George know how to make it work. I thank God for her. Come on here. She dressed her grands every Sunday from top to bottom. Uh, hallelujah to God. When you see her grandchildren walk into the house of God, know this. She has dressed them from top to bottom. She has purchased, come on here, their clothing with her own money. got a testimony to tell you about and the testimony comes from sister Jasmine Morrison she said Pastor Joyce I thank you for all you've done in the body of Christ I love you dearly and praise God that he allowed me to be in your life yes my mother was going to be with the Lord and yet God still blessed me to have a spiritual mother where there, there was never a lapse in guidance many times as a mother I just didn't know the answer to many situations but yet sister Jasmine stand up but yet I knew who I could call on come on here how as a mother pastor Joyce would give me great direction and guidance on being a godly mother I truly believe God 
honored me for simply obeying the woman of God. There was a time that my oldest daughter fell ill and Pastor Joyce was so instrumental in that challenging time. She was so knowledgeable in the situation and to what my daughter was going through that she directed me and all the steps I needed to take and has brought my daughter to healing. God, I praise your name. Praise God. Come on here. By me simply obeying the woman of God, my daughter is now walking in her healing. God, I praise you. She said, thank you, Pastor George, for all your continuing prayer, your mothering, your nurturing spirit that flows out of you. That was one tough battle that you taught me how to fight. And you taught me how to be the mother that I am today for my children uh, and a wife that I am to my husband. This is one of the reasons why I love being a blessing to you in any way, shape, or form. You help me through my darkest of days uh, and you will often tell me uh, it won't be this way always uh, just know Pastor Joyce I need you uh, many more women need you and they are coming uh, for what you have to give you're going to be a blessing to nations pastor you are valuable and needed in the kingdom of God tell your neighbor testimony number one Man, I thought that was powerful. Hallelujah to God. And how many of y'all know it tells us about the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. Hallelujah. Dick this Brenda, let me tell you something. I'm pretty good at some stuff. Hallelujah to God. I really am. I think I'm good at some stuff. But Minister Brad, there's one thing that my wife beat me at. Hallelujah to God. I don't know how she beat me at it, but she beat me at it. She beat me. Hallelujah to God. Trying to find something. Hallelujah. At a discounted price. As good as I am, I am no match for her. If my wife, if I said, babe, I need a new Fitbit watch, oh God, I praise you. And she will go and search and search and say, babe, I found one for this price. You ain't going to get it no cheaper. I don't quit looking. I ain't look no more. Say, look, Proverbs 31 woman, look for opportunities to buy cheaply at a distance. It may be distance from home versus laying versus a large price on the spot. She knows how to be patient and wait for a sale because they protect the house's resources. Listen. Listen, y'all. I remember times that we would be out clothes shopping and we had a certain amount of money that we could spend I actually actually had the money we would walk up on a dress and you know she tried to dress on and look good gave me I gave her the thumbs up the whole night okay it's a done deal Deacon Lee it's a done deal and she put the dress back up on the hanger and back on the rack I said man well, well, we're fitting the body I ain't paying that much for this dress. It'll be on sale next week. And we come back next week and she said, they marked it down some, but it ain't low enough. I'm saying, babe, we got the money. We can buy the dress. Nah, it ain't low enough yet. And we come back the next week. She said, there it is. And I used to just shake my head because of the Proverbs 31 woman look for opportunities. They look for a sale. They look for a way and they are patient. I don't have to have it now. I can be patient. A lot of things I'm going to say today, you can't apply this to your house. Okay? Listen, you do what works for you and your husband uh, husband and wife y'all do what works for y'all we had a hundred my wife had a hundred dollar limit she won't spend over a hundred dollars without checking with me she said babe what you think she called me from Walmart she said babe what you think this thing is a hundred and ten dollars and can I tell y'all what went through my mind 
Brother Andrew, you know what went through my mind? What went through my mind is we ain't struggling no more. We're not right. We don't have to. We ain't got tickets to the struggle bus anymore. We're not riding the struggle bus anymore. But you're still coughing. Pay this thing at $115. What you think? I said, man, I don't really care. I said, you do whatever you think is right. I said, babe, we good. Is that all right? I said, we good. But she imposed upon herself that there was a certain limit. Tell you about Proverbs 31. Tell you about my army. Look at Proverbs 31 and 15. She rises up while it is night, giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maiden. She considers fields and buy it with the fruit of her hand. She planteth a vineyard. Hallelujah. She rises up early to see that her family is taken care of. I never forget how she would get up early and get the children ready for school. She would make sure that they had breakfast. She would make sure that she got them to school on time. Hallelujah. I'm talking about she would drive them to school and not just take them to school, but she'd be one of the first parents out there to pick them up. My children didn't know what it was like to ride a bus. Hallelujah to God. And they, they, there was something that she would do that would really, I, I, this is what I used to say. She really taking this thing serious. If the child had a fever, say, what, you can take the medicine every six hours. So, got the little, the little dropper. They done took the medicine at six. So the next time, I mean at ten, so the next time they can take the medicine at four, right? Well, we all sleep at four. We all knocked out. Child, they're going to miss a dose. I'm tired, I'm sleeping. Mm -mm, not past Jordan. She up with a dropper in her hand. She up measuring it's four o'clock. I said, hold on. What you finna do? Finna give him his medicine. I used to like, wow. Wow. And doing potty training times, waking folks up in the middle of the night, talking about, come and use the bathroom. I said, man, that boy clean. <laughs> yeah, but he ain't gonna pee in this bed. I used to shake, I used to scratch my head like, wow. Time did not matter. What mattered was he's supposed to take his medicine every six hours. He's supposed to take his medicine every four hours. And every four hours, she don't understand. Oh, we, we missed the dose. Huh? How you miss a dose? This is a child that can't care for himself. Tell you never testimony number two. Minister Sheree Eli. I would like to say happy birthday, Pastor Joyce. I don't want to take this time to honor you. I can recall when I first started coming to the ministry. I remember you always smiling, having a soft, gentle spirit. I want to personally honor you today by saying thank you for demonstrating how to be a mother to my kids, how to listen to 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 what they have on their heart and allow them to speak. Not only did you demonstrate me how to love my kids, but you taught me how to pour in and speak life unto me, unto them. Speak, stand up, Mr. Sheree. You taught me how to walk in my authority, how to conduct myself like a lady and love myself. I'm so ever thankful because you made an impact in my life. Thank you for always being in place when I need you. May God bless you and may God meet and ex exceed every prayer that you have before him. I appreciate you and love you. Happy birthday. Love, Sharia. Amen. Proverbs said, the Bible said in 31 and 16, she considers the fields and buy it with the fruit of her hand. The next thing I got put down here is uh, Proverbs 34, woman is a prudent manager. She considers the budget before the purchase. I remember there were plenty of times she asked me, baby, are you sure we can do this? Remember, I was so excited that my sons were playing, my son were playing the drums that I went and bought a set of drums. 
said, Pat, she said, babe, can't afford this. Let them keep knocking on them pots and pans. We're going to be all right. I said, no, I'm getting these drums. And I got them drums. Seemed like everything broke loose after I bought them drums. I took that bill money and bought them drums. Seemed like everything broke loose. I'm going to tell y'all something. That was the worst purchase I ever made. It was a good investment. But it was a worse purchase. Because you know why? We couldn't afford them drums. <laughs> Pastor Joyce, I appreciate you for your unwary carry. You're very industrious. You're firm. You're strong. Your arm is strong. The Bible said, oh boy, what verse am I at? She girded up her 17. Her loins with strength. And she strengtheneth her arms. Her arms are strong. And she held me up when I needed it. I remember two stories. Listen, y'all. I have always been a source of strength. Pastor George can tell you I've always been a source of strength. Hallelujah to God. I'm not one that, that cry very easily or I will cry. I don't cry very easily, but I will cry. But something is going to have to really push me to make me cry. Is that all right? And I remember one Sunday morning taking every dumb drums. All right. I remember one Sunday morning I had to break down. And I had to call my pastor and say, Pastor, I need to borrow $500. Man, that was the hardest thing for me to do. Man, I, I got to the last digit to put the phone down. Last digit, put the phone down. Last digit, put the phone down. And I finally made that call. And I said, man, I'm in a tight situation right now, and I really need to borrow $500. I said, but trust me, you will get your money. But I need to borrow $500 told me, oh, you can get the money, don't worry about it, service over with, come see me, I can take care of you. Man, when I got off the phone, man, it seemed like my, ooh, whew, seemed like my heart got heavy, man. And I don't know how my wife know, she know when I'm about to cry, and I don't even know it. Minister Brad, I was in a, not in a good place, man, tell your neighbor, them drums. I was not in a good place. Brother Andrew, I just started boo-hooing on the bed, and I remember my wife rubbing my head and telling me that everything was going to be all right. Ha! Yeah. Remember her telling me that God had us. Yeah. God, I praise your name. And I remember uh, October, in October, I remember in October, and I told y'all this story. In October, and I remember that day I was laying in that bed, and hallelujah to God, and the doctor confirming, yeah, you, he definitely had a stroke. He said, it was a stroke. He said, but thank God things as well as they is, and you know, got, went walking to the bathroom. She helped me to the bathroom, got to the bathroom. Thank God I was able to use the bathroom by myself, came back, sat down. They brought me my little food, and hallelujah to God. I said, well, I guess I, I eat something. And I said, well, hallelujah. I don't know how long this situation, I'm supposed to be in this situation, you know. And I got the little spoon in my hand, and they, I don't know, ate and ate my food. And I got, got, got by the food. I did pretty good with the food. But, man, when it came to those peaches, mm, it was something about those peaches. And I picked the spoon up, and that peach juice was shaking everywhere. And keep in mind, she offered to feed me, but I said, man, I got to, I got to, got to, I'm not, I got to do this on my own. She said, well, man, I'm here and I got you. I said, I know you do, but I want to use you only as needed. I want to do for myself, but I only want you here if I really need you. I got this. And when I took that peach up to my mouth and my hand shaking it, Peach juice just whoo, went everywhere. Mm. God, I praise your name. 
It just went everywhere. And seemed like the enemy just came seizing in. It seemed like he grabbed my emotions and shook them. And I didn't even know I was getting ready to cry. But man, I could feel a heaviness came over me. And they were hanging. Tears was hanging in the balance. Whew. And Pastor George grabbed my hand and said, baby, you're going to be all right. She looked at me and, and made me make eye contact with her and say, you're going to be all right. And them tears went back up. They never came back. Tell your neighbor an arm of strength. Verse 19 says she layeth her hand to the spindle and her hands holdeth the distaff. I want to deal with laying her hand, oh God, to the spindle. God, I praise you. Mm. How many of y'all know she positions herself to be a blessing there? How many of y'all know? What? No, 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 I'm sorry. I got to back up to eight, verse 18. The Bible said her candle goeth not out by night. I want to thank God for Pastor Jordan. I can honestly say she continued to do well and keep the fire burning through it all. And her lamp never goes out during the night season. I don't care what we ever been through, how rough it ever been, hallelujah, that her light never went out. Oh God, I praise you that she continued to push me in the ways of God and she continue to have my back and continue to speak well of the Lord through it all. She was like a beacon in the night. Tell you about a beacon in the night. Testimony number three. Tell you about testimony number three. Sister Jamaica says, all glory to God, honoring Pastor Kendall and George Fleetwood. Thank you for this opportunity. This was an easy assignment. I've been watching you and studying you, and I know it was no one but God to play such a luminous person in my sight. I was literally walking through life in a dark place. He knew your glow was what I needed. Your unconditional love was what I needed. Your silence speaks violent, speaks volumes in so many ways to me. I mean that in a sense of watching me, your presence alone speaks to my soul. I become a better person because I've been attentive to a great image of God. For that I am grateful. Oh, it is amazing that God will stay focused on my servant. Your talks, your teaching, your smile, your listening ear, your silence has brought me from many dark places. I'm grateful, hallelujah, and appreciative. God keep putting in my spirit the poem footprints. I know the poem, but I went back and read it, and it became personal with you being placed in my life. You were God sent. No one can convince me different. Not that anyone has tried. During some hard times in my life, your teaching, your words of encouragement, WWJD, what would Pastor Joyce do? Walk with me, but the times you knew I couldn't walk with the trials and tribulations you carried me. You knew when it was too much for me to handle alone, and you refused to let me fall. Words, words could never express what you've done for me. I am who I am, whom I'm becoming, because you love me. Pastor Joyce, you are amazing, and I love you. Happy birthday, sunshine. Come on, you. The Bible says she layeth her hands to the spindle. She layeth her hands to the spindle. Pastor Joyce is an example to the believers. She don't mind putting in work to be a blessing. Listen, listen, can I tell you how God gave it to me? She don't mind putting in work to be a blessing to the women that want it. 
Yes, sir. Hallelujah to God. To the wives and to the husbands that will allow it. Listen, husbands. God never, God never, never meant for you to dictate and dominate. No, 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 no. I don't know where you got that from. But that is not God's plan for your marriage. That is not God's plan for your life to dictate and to dominate your wife. But God, God put you there to lead her. How many of y'all know Pastor Joyce is stretching and reaching, but somebody got to meet her halfway? Like, come on here, women. A lot of y'all would rather stay jacked up than to be delivered. I want to keep my crutch than to be delivered. But I'm telling you, deliverance is here. God sent you a deliver. I don't feel sorry for you. You've got to deliver right here in your midst. Stretch out her hand to the poor. She reaches forth her hand to the needy. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Listen, she, <clears throat> she makes sure that her house knows how to deal with the adversity of snow. She knows how to make sure her house knows how to deal with the adversity of snow. Proverbs 31 woman is supposed to teach the children how to deal with adversity. Not just when things are going good. No, no, no. So, Because a lot of times our kids want to quit because things ain't going well. And you just want to throw your hands up and quit. But mama said, no, no, no. If you started it, you're going to finish it. Mama said, no, no, no. No, no. I've got to teach. Because if you quit now, you'll be quitting the rest of your life. So she teaches them how to deal with the adversity. Hallelujah to God. Uh, Minister uh, Elder Bonaparte. When my son started playing the piano, he wanted to quit piano to go play football, and I was down with him. I said, yeah, that's all right with me. <laughs> Pastor George said, oh, no. No, 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 no. Part of my job is to locate. Listen, if you think parenting is just putting food on the table and and child, they got, they got some Jordans, child. My, my children don't wear nothing, but uh, what's the latest brand clothes? Talk to me. Oh, they don't wear nothing but polo, child. That's it. And you think that's all your responsibility is, to put food on the table, get fatten them up, and put them on nice clothes. And that's all your responsibility. Part of your responsibility is to locate the gifting. Locate their talents. Locate their anointing. Locate, locate what God's purpose is for their life. You got your chest stuck out. Child ain't never want for nothing. Child, my children always has something to eat. That ain't enough. That ain't enough. Take that, oh, that's good. Oh, I high five you for that. But that's not enough. You got to teach them how to, to deal with adversity. And Pastor Joyce would teach them how to deal with adversity. When, when Minister Josh sometime would try to take a shortcut on the song, she said, hold on, the song don't go like that. You, you skipped the whole section there. Come on, bring it back. It don't go like, da, na, na, na. She said, that's good, da, na, na, na. But what about, if the song said, da, na, 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 na. No, you missed those four, four, four keys. Bring them back, bring it back. She taught 
taught them how to deal with adversity. But listen, not only do they know how, they make sure that their children are not afraid of the snow. So not only just the children, but the whole household is not afraid of the snow, but she also know how to clothe, make sure their clothes with scarlet, and make sure the coverings of their tapestry or clothing is silk and purple. Pastor, what does that mean in revelation form? What that mean in revelation form, not only did she teach us how to deal with adversity, but she taught us how to deal with honor. Thank you all that. Let me tell you something, boy, if it had not been for the goodness of the Lord. And you remain humble. You, you don't brag and you don't post in yourself, but you brag in the goodness of the Lord. I remember one time, I think it was, uh, was it you, Mr. God? Was it you that told somebody they hadn't seen nothing yet? Holland, huh? Yeah. Well, it was me that got you. Hallelujah to God. But that was the same message I was conveying from your mama. Hallelujah to God that if we're going to boast, we're going to boast in the Lord, man. If it had not been what the theme of our message in our house was, if it had not been for the goodness of the Lord. Pastor George, you don't see her bragging about nothing. You don't see her boasting and bragging. If she boasting and bragging, it's in the Lord. Elder Jackson, testimony number four. Her guidance helped me grow during the early years of my life. As a young Christian, I would see Pastor George Fleetwood. She carried herself in such a way that you couldn't help but to draw strength from her. She was what I needed. She taught me how to walk in wisdom, helping me to know what to say, when to say, and when to just leave it alone. It was her guidance and leading the way that made me the wife, the mother, and the woman I am today. Advice, ad, advice information, her, her aim to help at resolving problems, difficulties, and directing me to making the right decisions. There was no shame when I didn't know. I thank God for having someone to talk to and to share what I was feeling inside. I'm rooted and grounded because the guidance she was so willing to give me when I needed it. I can still, her, still say, hear her say with a smile, it is well. The guidance of a spiritual mother is a gift that only God gives. Always the treasure, respect, build up and to hold on to. The truth she told me helped push me, caused me to travail in prayer, praise, and, and worship. Listen to the common thing. When I was at my lowest, oh yes, she was right there, constant telling me again, it is well. Through prayer and the laying on of hands, she would prophesy and speak life and believe God and tell me, you will conceive, you will bring forth. She would constantly tell me that God is going to do it. And we know that God honored his word to God be the glory. To appreciate her is to know her. To love her is to cherish her. Thank you for your guidance. For always letting me know what the word of God says. Putting me in remembrance of it. We walk by faith and not by sight. Knowing that when God is silent, he's up to something. Continue to keep the faith and know that God is on your side. With God, all things are possible. And for the years of setback, greater is your comeback. I salute you. I celebrate you. I appreciate you. I thank God for you, awesome woman of God. You are. Be encouraged on this day. Love you and enjoy your day. And I'm always in need of your guidance. Give her a hand clap. Bible says in verse 23, her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She's always been a blessing to me. 
She's never tried to hinder my advancements. She's always increased my influences. I don't have to worry about the this domestic anxieties, fighting and bickering and fighting and bickering over nothing. I mean, fighting over stuff don't even matter. Who moved my pillow? Who put the pillow over? Really, man? We fighting over who moved the desk. We fighting over who, who ate the, the, the little bit of who ate the last chips. Go buy some more chips, man. We fighting over who didn't make no Kool-Aid. Really, man? Tell your neighbor, really? I'm helping married folks. I hope I'm helping you. Yes, I hope I'm helping you. And I thank God that she always was a blessing. She never hindered my advancements. She never, uh, she always increased my influence. It was always a blessing to be able to say, I thank God for my, I want my wife to stand. I want my wife to stand. I want to thank God for my wife being here with me. It was always a blessing. It was always an honor. And the, and the Bible says strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice. Look at verse 25. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall, she shall rejoice in time to come. Strength and honor is her protection against fear and worryation. And when the Bible says that she shall rejoice in time to come, that means she laughs at the future and she laughs at adversity and that she is an encourager. If y'all think y'all encourage me, y'all ain't nothing. Damn. Man. My wife would tell me in a heartbeat, man, you preach today, Lord Jesus. I said, man, I love to hear you preach. She said, that's part of my problem. That's why I ain't up as much as I need to be because I love to hear you. <laughs> tell your neighbor, you never get to the place where you don't want to hear your pastor preach. I don't care what God take you. You should always want to hear your pastor preach. Is that all right? She laughs at adversity. She laughs at adversity. She rejoices in times to come because she knows that God is going to work it out. Y'all hang in there with me just a little bit. We almost done. Number five. Testimony number five is from Minister Brad. Pastor George, you've been a blessing to us. He's speaking on behalf of him and his wife and have done so in several ways. You blessed us with your strength. All who live righteous will suffer persecution. Yet amid challenges, your commitment are evident. Your loyalty is unwavering. Your stability is unshakable. Your example commands honor. One need not question where you stand regarding God, your husband, or your family. Your convictions are clear, strong, and secure. Your life declares it is what God said it is. You've blessed us with your outlook, your thoughts, and talk of tomorrow are never negative. Your co confession of it is well has become embedded in us as a reminder, never let today's setback eclipse tomorrow's promise. Pastor George, you strengthen our marriage sharpened our parenting, inspired our family, and nurtured our walk with God. Thank you for being such a tremendous blessing to our family. Happy birthday. Come on, give it up. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Verse 26 says, She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Pastor George flows in wisdom and everything she does come out of the law of kindness. Nobody in here can say, Pastor George, snap me up. I don't like the way she talked to me. Nobody can say that. Nobody can say, I don't like the way she talked to me. 
Hallelujah. Because one thing, I've never seen somebody that can be so kind but don't take no junk off nobody. How do you do a balance like that? Tell your neighbor, only God can do that. Never forget, we was in a service one time, Minister Avery, Brother uh, uh, brother Andrew, and we was in a service one time, and I, I, I experienced something I ain't never experienced before. Something I have never experienced before. Somebody came into our office, and, and you know we were there, and we just wanted to greet them and say, hey, praise God, thank God for your coming. And, and when they walked in, they walked in with attitude. Like, what y'all doing in here? Walked in with attitude. And I looked, I said, whoa. Got an attitude. And this is, it, I rarely get caught off guard. Everybody normally come in, hey, glad to see you. Thank God I can't, you know, can't wait to preach to you here today. You know, all excited and bubbly. This person came in with a bad attitude. I was like, whoa, I don't know what to do. I ain't know what to do. Tell you about, thank God for Pastor George. And she shifted in gear. She said, Let me, she said, ma'am, listen, I'm Pastor George Fleetwood, and this is my husband. And she said, listen, we here to welcome you to Bible Victory Tabernacle Bible Training Center. Look, we fit to leave. She said, I'm fitting to go do praise and worship. This whole office is all yours. You do, it, you do what you need. But I just want you to know, we just wanted to welcome you. And the ice just broke. Something just went boom, like something hit the floor. Her words are seasoned with grace that they may minister grace to the hearers. Pastor Joyce is not a gossiper. She's not an idle talker. She's a kind person and she knows how to watch over her attitude and her disposition. Which I did to my baby. I'm almost done. Verse number 27. She looks well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Minister Brad, listen here, women. Listen here, Proverbs 31 woman. You notice I keep saying that because I'm speaking it into existence. If you're not that Proverbs 31 woman, I'm speaking it into existence in your life. She had a home base on Home base was safe and under careful surveillance. She didn't eat the bread of idleness. My wife was so watchful that she didn't mind putting the work in. What do you mean she was watchful? She was so watchful that if their attitude wasn't right, or if they was picking up something that won't right, she'd call it out. She said, I don't know who you hang with at that school, but you ain't coming up in here acting like that. One of my sons, I don't know what happened. I don't know what got in him. And he said, he was talking to him, and he said something about dog. Yeah, dog. Like, that must have been the word they were using back then. Call each other dog. Boy, she said, who are you talking to? She said, you're going to cut that dog out now. I ain't no dog. I'm your mama. She cut it off before it got started. This is where you're supposed to have careful surveillance. You're supposed to keep home base safe and under careful surveillance. So you remember that time that, I think it was toward the end of school and everybody missed gym class. Anytime you missed a class, you got a call from the teacher, automatic call that you didn't come to class that day. You remember? And I had to call the dogs off. Like, she said, now, where were you at? He said, he said my, none of us went to gym. It was the, like last couple of days, nobody went to gym. Now, I ain't calling you for nothing. I mean, she went in so I had to say, babe, he, he good, babe. The father had to call off the dogs. 
She was a personal. See, listen here, Proverbs 31 woman. This is how we let stuff get too far. Because we don't inspect home. We got too much going on. We don't inspect home base. We got too much going on that we can't inspect. You never let a day go by without inspecting attitudes. Hey, I need you to go get this. And you hear something stomping. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, c -c -c come on, man. I'm fitting to stomp. I'm fitting to stomp a hole in you. Don't you ever stomp at me. When I tell you, you got to inspect attitudes to keep a care, careful surveillance of your house. Something is wrong while we're eating dinner and, and my, my daughter don't want to eat dinner with us. Something ain't right here. Why don't she want to share with the others? Something ain't right here. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. And that's your job. That's your job, and Pastor Joyce did an excellent job of inspecting attitudes and reviewing dispositions. It would, it, she would inspect so much, I would say, baby, I hate it. You don't see what I see. <laughs> 31 and 28 says she called, she her children arise up and call her blessed. And her husband also, he praises her. I'm going to give y'all some wisdom here. They rise up and call her blessed. That word blessed there comes from the Hebrew word asher. And it means to be straight. Her children say, my mama's straight. What our problem is, listen to me. Let me tell you how God gave this to me. What we worry about, we judge people about what we hear from the street. Child, the street talk. I ain't worried about no street. I'm worried about what I hear from the house. It's the house that makes the street allow me. But I want to know what is the house saying. Is the children saying my mama straight? Is the children saying my mama saved? Is the children saying my mama love the Lord? Is the children saying I can see God's hand on my mama's life? A lot of children are jacked up because mama and papa crooked as a snake. Man, y'all quiet up in here, man. Nobody saying nothing. I know some of the kids got the devil in them. I got that. But you shouldn't have let it got that far before you lit them up. They didn't start cutting up when they got 16. They started at 8, 9, 10. And you let it get by. You let them get by. You should have lit them up. Tell your neighbor, you can break that spirit out of them. The Bible said the rod, come on here, Proverbs 31, woman, the rod of correction. Pastor, I can't do nothing with my child. God said I gave you a rod, didn't I? God said I gave him a soft tush. Tell you never, let, let the children speak. This is from combination. Minister Josh, Minister Juwan, Minister Arnisha. She's clothed with strength and dignity. This is the last testimony. Mom, we thank you for being a jewel in our life of the entire Fleetwood family. We are so thankful to have a mother like you. So thankful to God that we get to celebrate you today. A mother's love is something that becomes a part of those she affects. Mom, the entire fam Fleetwood family would like to say thank you for giving us an abundance of love and filling our cups till they run over. An everlasting love for your entire family. From your two sons, Juwan and Josh, you show that love in a number of ways. Giving us hugs when we were younger, giving, of a, giving us a constant barrage of tender love and care, 
building us up in our minds, body, and soul, reminding us of how much you loved us and spending time with us, drowning us in a literal sea of constant validation and affectionate care, sharing countless laughs with us and being the greatest cook of all times. From the pancakes of our youth to the sloppy Joe lunches of the summertime, to the amazing fried chicken, stew beef, and soul food dinners that stopped us in our tracks as we were playing outside. For your beloved daughter-in-law, affectionately call your daughter in love. She would like to thank you for taking up time with her and spending time with her, for loving her, and not for what she could do for you, but stepping in and walking right into that mother's role after her parents are passed. For the countless times that you would eat out, shop together, and spend time with her, she would love to, she would love to thank you for all those times that you would let her do your head do that you would let her do your hair and the bonding time that y'all all had and constantly have together. She would like to thank you for accepting her into the Fleetwood family after she married her minister, Joan. She even thanked you for everything you do for her children, the grandchildren, KJ, Kandasia. One thing about it, those kids love their grandma. They run fast as they can when they realize Jima has stepped in the room. Their faces light up and so excited to see you. We all know that KJ and, and Kandasia are in good hands with you and that you're gonna make sure they get, make sure they get what they want and need. Mom, the Fleetwood family love you and if we haven't told you lately, you're amazing. You're literally a real life superwoman. Endurance is often the mark of a person that is spirit-driven. We would like to say thank you for your endurance and consistency. What if we told you that we knew somebody that is sweet and gentle while being strong and tough? This would be our mother. Someone delicate and affectionate while being tough and determined. This would be our mother. Someone despite the pain and trials can put on their spiritual armor and go to war alongside of you. This will be our mother. What if we told you we, need so we knew somebody who can greet you with the sweetness of smiles, but yet hit the devil with haymakers? This will be our mother. Someone that is humble and has no desire to be in the spotlight, but yet bold as a lion in the spirit. This will be our mother. Our beautiful, powerful, amazing mother. Mom, the Fleetwood family would like to tell you that you that your life has been full of meaning and purpose. We celebrate you today. We are so thankful that you are our mother. You have been an amazing representation of Christ in our life and the life of others. The same way you nurtured us, God called you to be a spiritual mother to many. God will, call, will use you to do countless exploits in his kingdom. The praise and worship that flows from you will draw many souls to Christ. Not only is God going to use your physical voice, but he also is going to use the voice of your influence to push forth the will of God on the earth. Mom, we love you. The Fleetwood family wants to say that we can never, ever repay you for all the things you've done for us. But we're going to spend the rest of our life making an attempt to do so. We would like to say on today that, Mom, you left no, stern on, no stone unturned. We love you, Mom, and enjoy your birthday. I want to bring this thing to a close. Let's read the last three verses. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou, but thou excellest them all. Favor is this deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gate. Pastor Joyce. There have been many armies, many daughters have done virtuously. There's many women out there that are striving to do the best they can to their husbands and to their wives and to their children. Many of them 
trying to get it right. May not have gotten it right, but God saw their heart. They tried. Many daughters has been in the army. But I want to salute you today and tell you that you excel them all. Yes, sir. Your greatest strength, Pastor George, as beautiful as you look today. You look so good today that I couldn't even hardly look you in your eyes before prayer. <laughs> you came and purposely stood in front of me so I take a good look at you. But I wanted to tell you, you know we get ready to have prayer. As beautiful as you are, heading on 60 years old, yes, as beautiful as you are, your greatest strength, even more than your charm and your beauty. Pastor George, I will take you anywhere with me. I'm not ashamed of you. You can hold your own. Remember when we had my, when I was retiring and all went to lunch together and they said invite your wife I didn't have to cringe up I said, Lord Jesus I didn't have to go to the meeting and say man she couldn't make it man lie and say she couldn't make it well, when they said invite your wife it was an honor they said oh yeah they said send me a picture of you and your wife we want to put it up so everybody can see it I said oh that's going to be that's going to be easy and I sent the picture, and everybody said, man, I tell you, she got the best of that battle, did she? <laughs> had to go to home office, and I had to do a speech before my counterparts and my people. I drove all the way to Greenville to speak for 10 minutes. And they said, bring your wife with you. Man, I was so proud. One of the supervisors looked at me and said, man, what did you do? I said, what do you mean to get such a beautiful woman? You, Fleetwood. <laughs> she held on. When we had the, 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 the luncheon, she sat down with some of my other supervisor friends and man, they got to talking about medical stuff and he was having trouble with something dealing with his sinuses, I just left them alone, let them go in. At the end of the day, he said, man, I tell you, I really enjoyed talking to your wife. And you know what? I didn't have a problem with them talking to her either. She held her own. But her greatest strength, as beautiful as she is, and as much charm as she has, my wife can turn on the charm. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My son said the teacher on the phone said, whoa, oh, my, you got another voice. Hello, this is Mr. Greenwood. Can I help you? She said, whoa. She can turn on the charm. And as great and as beautiful and charming as she is, her greatest strength that she loved the law. And that her boast is in the law. Listen to this. I'm just going to tell you how I wrote what I wrote down. The Bible said, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her. She has not wrote a book. She has not wrote a song that's for sale. But she has laid, why do we honor her? She has laid the blueprint on how to lift up and support your man of God. She has laid the blueprint how to shoot the arrow in God's direction for, for your children. I conclude, y'all, after all these testimonies, that Pastor Joyce, you're worthy of honor. There's one thing that there's one thing that kind of frustrates me a little bit. And this is what frustrates me a little bit. Okay? 
Y'all yeah, know me and Pastor Joyce now hung up on titles, right? Because we were hung up on titles, you'll be calling me Bishop Fleetwood. There are folks now that are bishops that I rem I helped them get saved, man. And I'm looking at them saying, hey, Bishop so and so. I remember folks, hallelujah, that said, man, I used to watch you on TV. You really ministered to me. I'm calling them bishop now. So we're not hung up on titles, okay? But I got to conclude to say one thing. Pastor Joyce has earned the right to be called Pastor George Fleetwood and not Sister, hey, Sister Joyce. I want to know who you talking to. Who are you talking to? This is Pastor George Fleetwood. The same way we acknowledge your wife that hadn't done half the things. She led this whole church in praise and worship. She taught us wisdom, how to carry and conduct ourselves. Pastor Joyce has been with me in the trenches. Let me tell y'all something. She been with me when I ain't had nothing but a word. She didn't follow the money. I ain't had nothing but a word. I ain't had no money. I ain't had no nice house. I ain't had no nice car. I ain't had nothing. I know she loved me for me. Because I didn't have nothing. She trusted me when we was in the storefront. And it was just me and my family praising the Lord. She was with me when we went and preached and didn't know the vehicle would get us back home. She didn't have to come. She said, baby, I ain't riding that ragged car down there, all the way down there. You going without me. She was right there. This woman has showed us nothing but Christ and him crucified. Pastor Joyce hadn't run anybody out the church. Nobody. Most of the time they run, folks lead the church, they blame the pastor wife. Yeah, that pastor wife got a big mouth. I tell you, she got on my nerve, right? To get up out of there. But if anything, they say, I did it. That Pat Fleetwood. What about Pastor Joyce? Pastor Joyce, all right. But that Pat Fleetwood. And I don't mind. I'd rather you put it on me. I'd rather you put it on me. That's fine. I'll take the blame for it. But I come today to say, Pastor George, we find no fault. No cause, no case, no action, and no acquisition. Nothing. How are you able to take care of me and nurse me back to health during the stroke and at the same time? Take care of two grandchildren. She was with me during the pandemic. She blessed and taught many people praise and worship when there was only 10 or less in the building. She led praise and worship and they will run to the camera to make sure that I look. She stood by her husband. In the midst of it all. Jealousy and pride would not let them say, Pastor Joyce, I watch your video on praise and worship and you bless me. But jealousy and pride said, no, can't do that. But I honor you today. Many folks say, man, I saw y'all praise and worship. Man, that thing blessed me, man. And I'm steady scrolling, said, man, see when you comment or left any like or nothing. But Brother Andrew, if we were somebody popping, they'd be liking and re-liking and retweeting and commenting and re-commenting. What is a title? What is a title without a name? Pastor George, you have the name of purity, the name of holiness, the, the name of righteousness. I have no other choice but to give you the title. Thank God. I married, I married Sister Joyce Fleetwood. But in 1999, 
She would transform the Pastor George Fleet. She earned this title after honoring the Lord. And I give honor to her. Pastor Joyce, we went to school together. I was looking at you and I was inspecting you. You was a true example of holiness. You was the preacher's daughter. And y'all, I wasn't doing nothing crazy. Y'all listen to me now. Pastor wasn't doing nothing crazy. But digging his brand, I wasn't, wasn't where I needed to be in God. I wasn't where I ought to be. Because when Mother Fleetwood came down here and she went back and she was going to come back, well, while she left, I kind of dropped off a little bit. That, that influence, that, that hand, Mother, Mother Flish Fisher wasn't, wasn't strong enough. Her age, she was in age. And I, I was a young 13, old 13 year old bull. Won't doing nothing crazy. Just got caught up with the wrong crowd, the wrong people, and so on and so forth. But I saw Pastor Joyce that we had, I think, a geometry together. And you know, in the first couple of days in your class, you can change classes. When I looked and saw she was in the class, I said, I'm going to straight to the guidance counter. I'm getting up out of here. Because I plan on cutting up so. I plan on giving the teachers some trouble. I plan on laughing with my friends. I plan on being a knucklehead. And I, you know what, Brother San Juan, I didn't want her to see me because I respected her walk. I saw God in her life. And y'all, I refused to even approach her. I was like Moses with the burning bush. I refused to approach her till I got myself together. Her hips, lips, and fingertips were beautiful to look. But I saw God. I saw God. And when I got myself together, it's then when I went knocking on the door. And she kept me knocking for a good while. I had to knock for a while. I think I knocked over a year. 1985, I got married. I weighed 228 pounds. A year later, I weighed 285 pounds. I never forget the favorite dish. Rice and greasy uh, smoked sausage, lima beans and biscuits. And them things blew me up. We struggled, but she did whatever she had to do to make it happen. What did Pastor Jeff George do to make it happen? She gave us homemade haircuts. We couldn't afford to go to the barber, so she went and got a $10 pair of clippers, and she just took us. Everybody got bald. She just bald us, skin. Looked like we got skin. We would get one Chinese plate and make it work. She knew how to divide the rice, give everybody a wing and a, what's that little piece of the wing you break off? Yeah, the tip, spread the tips around and we made it work. During the summer, I said, baby, these kids in here eat like hogs. She said, I'll fix them. She said, all I need is a, a box of bisquicks. Brother, and I'm telling you, uh, dig, digging at Brenda, she got that homemade uh, pancake and blowed them up. Where she was giving them a she would get them three and four pancakes. And they ain't want nothing else to eat till later that afternoon. She was blowing them up with pancakes. And Brother Andrew, our greatest friend, Sister Jennifer, our greatest friend was Hamburger Helper. Pastor George, I can't bring Hamburger and Helper in the house now. No, 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 no. I said, well, babe, I'm going to cook this for me. No, no. She said, the smell of it make me sick. Neck bones and rice. 
driving beat up cars with no complaints. She loved me not for what I could do for her. One room, one bed in my mama house, no money. But she believed in me. August of 1988, I was able to put her in a brand new house with no furniture, no living room set, no kitchen set. But she made it work. We worked side by side for two years. After that, we made a decision that she would take over the house and the kids, and I would do whatever I needed to do to bring home the bacon. During the two years that we worked side by side, she trusted me to pick her check up and make the budget work. She never once cashed her own check. She never once, in, one time she just said, babe, can I at least see a check? <laughs> but she trusted me. And for the folks that say, child, hmm, hmm, child, ain't fool, ain't no gonna be no fool like that. All I gotta ask you is, who the fool now? Two thousand and fifteen, KJ almost didn't make it. But I'm telling you, the person that was the rock through it all, when it looked like we all about to fall to pieces, the one that was the rock through it all was Pastor George Fleetwood. What 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 makes us so special, Pastor Fleetwood? Them, are, yeah, them was her children. After all, them is her grands. I tell you what makes her special. She looks after them and you don't have to break her off nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mama do that, yeah, but you study breaking off. Yeah. Mama hand out. Hey, yeah. 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 No tell your neighbor, no charge no. for her services. Yeah. No charge. No charge. Last thing I'm gonna say. Last thing I'm gonna say. Closet space has always been a problem in my home. Always been a problem in my home. Well, Brother Andrew, I don't know how. Don't know how. KJ got his own club. I don't know how. How it happened. Kendasia has her own closet. I mean, their own closet. Y'all think I'm kidding. Their own closet. She knows where her shirt at. Where that shirt at with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, crosses on it. I'm missing a shirt and I'm looking up like, man, this, this guy has a whole wardrobe up there. Are you talking about a shirt? <laughs> Pastor George, we love you. Amen. We do. I want you to know you are my army. God couldn't have gave me anybody no better than when he gave me you. And I just wanted to come today and do it in a different kind of way today Amen. to let you know how much we appreciate you. Victory Tabernacles is excited today. Yeah. They're excited to come and honor you because you set the example. You set the example. One thing I said, listen to what I said. One thing I said, me and Pastor George came to an agreement. We came to agreement. Now, you don't go make a bunch of debt and talk about, I want to do like Pastor George. I want, I want to go home and build my key. Pastor George hadn't created any debt. Is that all right? You got 10 bills. Tell me you want to go home with your child. Well, you're going to pay these bills off first. <laughs> It makes sense. Pastor Joyce, I want to speak a blessing over your life. 
And I just want to let you know that you, 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 you coming in our midst is not, this is not normal. For some of us, we've never been anywhere. This is the only church we've ever been in. We don't know nothing. Now. Ain't never been nowhere. You'll be surprised how many pastors' wives just tear churches completely up. Tell everybody's secrets. Just tell it all. You'll be surprised. I could tell you some horror stories. But we don't, we don't have that problem. And we'll take somebody like Pastor Joyce and we'll take them for granted. We'll take them for granted. One more thing I want to say about you, Pastor Joy. I'll put you up in, fr in front of anybody. I'll take you anywhere. And I'll be right there to be your pastor's aide. If they say, Pastor, uh, 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 Serena Jakes called and wants you to be one of the speakers on the women's conference, I'll tell you, baby, let's go to work. Get your Bible. We got work to do. I'll be right there with you. And you got this. You got this. You can tell them something about raising kids. You can tell them something about loving their husband. You can tell them something about going through. You can tell them something about longevity in marriage. You got something to say. Is that all right? Pastor George, before I pray over you and speak a blessing over your life, I want to, every year, Ella Jackson has a project that she does, and she does this project to bless you personally. And I thank God for, and I know she didn't get a chance to ask all the women because we do try to keep it at, keep it at 10. And in the, the years to come, if anybody else want to be a part of it and say, Elder Jackson, you didn't ask me, but I want to get in on it. And I, and I know some of you would have got in on it, but nobody asked you. But that's okay. You still get a chance to bless her today. But she asked these people for a certain amount. And they were so glad to give it. And as I call your name, I'm going to get you to stand up. Sister Jasmine Moody, Sister Jamaica Hemingway, Sister Ayana Bristow, Elder Bonaparte, you don't have to stand. Sister Jackie Mason, Elder Sheila Jackson, Deaconess Brenda Savage, Minister Anisha Fleetwood, Sister Latoya Lagan, and Minister Cherie Eli. To all of you ten, I just want to say I thank you for blessing Pastor Joyce with a special gift. And if you was not able to get in on it, don't worry about it. You got a card and you put something in the card today. You're fine. You still get a chance to be a blessing. But you know what I appreciate about y'all 10? I appreciate that y'all didn't, didn't think it was robbery. That you thought that that small amount of money that you was asked to give that for what she has given you you saw it as, man, this ain't nothing. And I appreciate it. Because that's the attitude y'all have. This ain't nothing. And I appreciate y'all having that attitude. To have a woman of this caliber in my life? Give God praise. Pastor Joyce, in Jesus' name, I pray over you. I speak a blessing over your life. God is going to strengthen you from the crown of your head to the very sole of your feet. And God told me to tell you, as long as you continue to seek and to serve him, he shall cause a glow, a charm, and a beauty to come over you. He shall cause a beauty, a glow, and a charm to stay over you, saith the Lord. I strengthen you with might down in your inward man. God, I praise your name. God, I praise your name. God is going to continue to deal with you concerning things to come and concerning people's lives and 
concerning things that he's going to do in their lives and you shall even call and say let me tell you what the Lord showed me let me tell you what the Lord told me you know what God told me to tell you that you're full of weight can I tell y'all what we're looking for we're looking for somebody that's making a bunch of noise but it has no weight woman of God you got a lot of weight you got a lot of clout with God God's going to bless you in a mighty way. He's going to bless the works of your hand. What you have to put out and to pour out. Because you're not doing, doing it for fame, fortune. But you're doing it to, to lift up his name and to glorify his name. And you're going to be a great blessing to the body of Christ. Because your worship is pure. Your worship is real and it's pure. It's the purity of your worship. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Joyce, I just want to tell you that I love you in front of everybody. Not ashamed to tell you that I love you. Not ashamed. I love it when we ride together. I love it when... We just talk and laugh. Minister Brad, Brother Andrew, Minister Avery, the best thing happened to me when I went to the emergency room the other week was with just me and my wife in the room laughing and talking and grinning. Man, I enjoyed that. I did. Next morning, I'm ready to go home. All right, y'all get me up out of here, man. You ain't making no more money off me. Everything fine. Is that all right? All right. Can't close the class register. It's time to go. But I had a good time just laughing and grinning and talking and just me and her. Just laughing and grinning and and I enjoy her company. Yes, I do. After 36 years, I still enjoy her company. Is that all right? Laugh and play and pick and just have a good time. Sometimes I like to pick so much, Mr. Brand, that she get mad at me. And you know when I know when, when I got her, when she said, babe, you play too much now. I said, this is fun to me. But Pastor Joyce, I hope that this presentation met with your utmost approval. Give God a hand praise. Come on. I'm going to ask Minister Jawan to come up. We're getting ready to take up our tithes and offering and then we want to do everybody that's going to bless everybody that's going to bless her everybody that's going to bless her that they're going to give it to her I want them to give it directly directly to her that what you plan on giving whether it's a card or you know, I think some have already given by cash app I want to thank God for uh, brother Quentin and I also want to thank God for God. Y'all give me y'all for stand up and just holler out your full name. Look, y'all got to work with Pastor, okay? Just get a whole name. You know I know. You know I know your name, right? Can I can I tell you how I know their names? Can I tell you how I know their names? Y'all ready for this? I'm going to tell you how I know their names. I know their names because they are faithful tithers and they support this church. You may not see them. I'm talking about doing COVID. All doing COVID. It's, this married couple paid their tithes. Let's give them a hand clap. We 
thank God for them being with us. I also want to thank God. Y'all, his brother, his brother Brandon birthday today. Let's give it up for him, man. Thank God for him. You're getting old now, young man. Thank God for you. I want to thank God for uh, Brother Brandon has a cousin that come all the way from Philadelphia to see about him. No, no, no. Listen, she really came all the way just to see about him. Brother Brandon, if you will holler, I don't even want her to speak. You holler out her name because she's a visitor. Come on, let's give it up for Sister McCray. We thank God for you being with us on today. We thank, I, I think that's it. We thank God for Sister. Uh, also, thank God for Sister Savage. She's not a visitor, but I thank God for Sister Savage also being with us today. Let's give it up for her. Come on. All right. Listen, y'all can just go ahead and bless it. Who else? If you need a tithe envelope, put your hand up. 